So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology should you buy iPhone XS Max or Galaxy Note 9. These are the two most premium phones from each manufacturer, the number three smartphone manufacturer in the world, Apple, or the number one smartphone manufacturer in the world, Samsung over here. These are their best offerings currently and uh, they both start at around $1,000. The iPhone XS Max being a little more at 1100 for 64 gig, 128 gig gets you a Note 9 at $1,000. So right off the bat, the pricing for the Note 9 is better value than the iPhone XS Max. Even its 512 gig model is $1,249. And the iPhone XS Max 512 gig model starts at $1,449. And a lot of articles and videos and internet places that are talking about tech are misleading people by saying this phone is $1,500. No, it's not. It starts at $1,100. I'm telling you like it is. That's the truth right there now if you want to go up to the top tier then they're talking about you know the 512 gig and that but i feel like a lot of people keep saying the price of the tennis max is the 512 gig when it doesn't start at that it's more like it starts at 1100 so keep that in mind in terms of the pricing they're both premium they're both over a thousand many people don't even want to buy a thousand dollar phone but we're going to find out which one is better if you are going to invest this kind of money let's begin with the build quality okay guys so let's begin by talking about the build quality beginning with the iphone tennis max when i bought this phone i pulled it out the box i was like this is a luxury piece right here this thing feels like a million bucks gold material stainless steel around the edges super high quality in stainless steel and uh, it reminds me of versace gucci rolex all these name brand luxury brands this thing fits right in rodeo drive you know hollywood this thing is michigan avenue chicago times square new york i mean Think of any place where you got like the most abundant areas, the most beaming with all kinds of accessories, gadgets, luxury, all that. You know, every city seems to have like a little spot where they got all their premium stuff. This is where this phone kind of fits in. I mean, not to say it don't fit in your pockets, it can fit in anybody's pockets. But I'm just saying, if you want a luxury piece, if you want something that feels like a like you pay, you got what you paid for, you're definitely going to like the Tennis Max in terms of this build quality because it feels great in the hand it has nice curves around the edges and uh very grippy but it is wide so if you won't like a tall and wide phone you might want to look at the smaller version here but i think most people know what they're getting into when they buy the tennis max apple's claiming the strongest glass on the rear strongest glass on the front i still recommend a case you don't want to drop this thing 599 to replace the back 329 to replace the front those are some if you if you if you drop both sides it's going to cost you almost the price of another iphone so that's the build on the iphone 10s max nice switches here the buttons feel tactile grippy stainless steel on the sides glass a little slippery on the rear buttons feel overall pretty nice i just think this phone feels great in the hand overall it is weighty though 208 grams ip68 so it's pretty water resistant but it is pretty heavy at 208 grams you know so keep that in mind if you're going to 10s max it's the heaviest iphone ever should you buy the note 9 in terms of the build quality this one to me is very premium as well but it feels more of a practical design i look at the note 9 and i'm like this is more of a utility this is like a premium utility so what i mean is this is a flashy sports car this one looks more like a you know very nice premium truck this thing is just it's just big, square, boxy, rectangular. It has aluminum sides, so I don't think that it's as nice as the stainless steel on the iPhone XS Max here, but it's still pretty grippy with its glass back. It does get smudged up. Both of them get smudged up, although the gold does do a good job at hiding those smudges. The Note 9's blue definitely does not. It does have a nicer camera design. It's a little more flat on the rear. It also feels like a million bucks in your hand. Either one of these you go with feels like you got what you paid for. I think that the iPhone XS Max has a more stylish looking design in terms of the body, but the Galaxy Note 9 doesn't have a notch, so you got to keep that in mind. If you don't like notches, you're definitely going to like the Note 9. The Note 9 also supports IP68 and is cheaper to fix both the back and the front. Now, the front, I already called Samsung. They said it's going to cost like $229 plus tax, so it's $100 or so cheaper to fix than the iPhone and the rear. I've heard that it's actually much cheaper to fix the rear on the Galaxy Note 9. Both of these companies do offer like Apple Care, Samsung Care, so if you get those, you're pretty much good to go, but if you don't, you know it's going to be an investment but the note 9 is the cheaper phone overall to fix on the whole the build quality is about even about equal but i think that the stainless steel just gives the 10s max just a slight edge in feeling more premium than the note 9 that's my take on 
these two, but using the Note 9, you're not really missing anything from using the XS Max because most people are going to have these in cases and then you don't even feel the stainless steel anymore. So piggybacking on the body and the build, let's just talk a little bit about the design and the feel in the hand. So the iPhone XS Max, when you're holding it, it feels pretty tall. It's like you got to reach really high up there to get to that control center. There's no way to bring that down besides this, but this is going to get annoying after doing this a ton of times here. This, this reachability mode, you're going to be utilizing this quite a bit for the XS Max. It's a really widescreen too. So one-handed use on this is virtually not going to happen for most people. What you're going to have to do often with this phone is grab it with one hand, use your other hand to swipe down and do the swiping like this. So I think that one hand ability is not going to be, I don't even know if one hand ability is a word, but I don't know if it's going to be that great for a lot of people. Unless you have really large hands, like NBA player type hands, you're probably not going to be one hand in this phone too often. I do also want to mention that the iPhone XS Max fits more screen in a shorter body. So you got to give Apple props there for fitting more of a display, even though it has a notch, it's still got more screen in a shorter body, although it is wider feeling. So the Note 9, although it's taller, gets the edge in the one-handed feel because of this curved design it's a narrower display, so you can kind of reach over a little bit more. Now, it's still gonna be hard for a lot of people to reach the top, but the Note 9 cleverly implements features like swiping down on the fingerprint to go ahead and pull down your notifications tray, stuff like that. Also, there's ways that you can pull down the tray here from the middle of any screen. I think you have to do that Nova Launcher. They might even have a feature here in TouchWiz, but there's just ways to get around, you know, one-hand ability on Android phones that you don't find as much, except for that reachability mode for the iPhone XS Max. You can also swipe from the corners on the Note 9 to bring it down, which easily makes this usable for just about anybody on the one hand. So when it comes to that feel in the hand, the Note 9 has, I think, the edge when it comes to being able to utilize this screen for one hand. But I don't like how the Note 9 just feels like a bigger phone, even though it has less size screen. So I think Apple gets the win for cramming more screen on a shorter phone, although the Note 9 can get the win on the width Remember, this is also a flat display versus a curved display. So if you don't like curved displays, you got to keep that in mind when buying these two as well. All right, guys. So here we go with displays. There's some key differences here, but both are produced by Samsung. That's the first thing I want to get out of the way. So either one you go with, you're going to be a happy camper here. Best displays in the world. Now, there's some website I seen. I forget what his name is. Display check or display mate, something like that. That says that the iPhone XS Max is the best display ever. And a lot of people believe sources like this but when you're done mental masturbating with the science let's get on to the real world and talk about the real differences the note 9 is a much sharper display with a higher pixel count it's like over 500 versus 458 you can actually watch 1440p content on a note 9 and i can clearly see that the note 9 is a sharper display than the 10s max now that's not to say that the 10s max is a bad display it's a great display and i know a lot of people are going to say well a lot of these places are going to say or articles or sources are going to say the 10s max is better because it's more color accurate and it is more color accurate it's a wide color gamut display apple's going for more of the photography style here and trying to not over exaggerate the colors and things like that but when we're talking about a large display People are buying these to consume media. And when you consume media, this is where the Note 9 blows away the iPhone XS Max. No notch, so it doesn't cut into your content whatsoever. The blacks are so deep on the Note 9. They even look deeper than the iPhone XS Max. And the contrast is just crazy on this device. Super vibrant. Now, you can say, well, that's over-exaggerated on a Samsung display. When you actually put the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 into the, let's go into the basic mode. Over here in a basic mode, it literally comes down to the same, almost the same color balance as the one you get on the iPhone XS Max. It literally looks almost identical. So you can tweak that display to look very similar to the XS Max. Now, the pros of the XS Max that I love about this phone is True Tone. True Tone adjusts to your environment, and this thing is great for being easy on the eyes and stuff like that. I also like how, you know, how accurate it can be at times because sometimes I don't want to look at the super vibrant display. I want something that's a little bit more relaxing on my eyes and not so vibrant and glaring in my face. And in those times, I love the XS Max display. But if you like vibrant colors, if you like, you know, your media to pop, if you love those TVs you see at Best Buy, or you see at the electronic store that are like OLED and they're standing on, you know, the wall and they're just punching out at you, this is the type of display you get for the Note 9. It's like a little mini TV 
in your pocket. So media heads, get yourself the Note 9. So people who are into photography and they want the most accurate colors for video editing and photos and stuff like that, Adobe Lightroom, things that are going to be really requiring that perfectly accurate color, you definitely are going to want the iPhone XS Max. It's a little bit better for those things. And people who just don't like, you know, overly, you know, popping colors or just colors that just stand out. I don't know why you wouldn't, but you might really prefer the 10s max in this regard okay guys so when it comes to software you're running ios you have widgets off to the left you also have basically a grid of icons this is android on the right here with samsung experience version layered on top now the big difference is here there's one major difference that i find between both of these and that is multitasking so that's basically what I think that you gotta decide. Do you wanna multitask with multiple apps? If you don't care about using one app at a time, I think you'll still like the 10s Max the same as the Note 9. But if you wanna do things like open up the Play Store, let's go ahead and split that Play Store, go browse and do stuff like this, it's not happening on the iPhone 10s Max. Now, one thing I find funny is that the iPhone no longer can do rotation on the home screen. Now, I don't know why this is. Apple hasn't come out and said exactly why, but the iPhone 8 Plus, the 7 Plus could rotate in landscape. You can't do that here for the 10s Max. That's extremely disappointing. Now, you can still do it in settings. It still does do the plus size, you know, split screen here on, you know, apps, but I don't care about just apps. I want it to be on the home screen as well. Now, Samsung, funny enough, never even had that feature before, but here on the Note 9, you can do this landscape mode. So it's like Apple got rid of this on their home screen and now Samsung does this. So the Note 9 to me is just a much more computer-like experience in your pocket. The iPhone is a much more big mobile iPhone experience. So this is more of a mobile OS still, even though it has a larger screen, they're not really taking too much advantage of it. Yes, you can put this in the zoom mode, but that's about all it does to give you, you know, a little bit of that, you know, more screen, you can go standard or zoom. You couldn't do this on the 10 and look at it only changes this slightly. So this is not taking advantage of the large screen. And for this size, I wish they would put some iPad style features on the 10s Max. It's just, it's got the room to do it. I don't know why Apple doesn't do this already. Now with the Note 9, you could be watching a Nick Ackerman video, hit this little home button and you still have the pop-up view and you could still do things in the background. You can also pop view this Play Store, put it right there. You can also pop view some other apps, like how about the Samsung internet store right here? You can hit the home button, bring them down, move them around, they'll be right there, ready to go. I mean, stuff like this is just not possible for the iPhone XS Max, and this gives the Galaxy Note 9 a real edge when it comes to its software. But where the iPhone really wins here in the software is its app polish. Social media, for one, Instagram videos look way better on this iPhone XS Max, and just social media apps just seem so much smoother and better for iPhone. So if you're in a social media, like a lot of social media use, you'll like this phone more. This phone is more, you know, business use. It's more getting work done on your phone and multitasking and doing more than the average consumer is gonna do on a device. This is a power user's dream right here in the Galaxy Note 9. Also, updates are gonna happen more frequently for the iPhone XS Max. I mean, the Galaxy Note 9 launches a new phone with not even the latest version of Android at the time, which is pretty disappointing, considering Pi was already out when the Galaxy Note 9 came out. So it's the same story as it was last year with the Note 8 versus the iPhone 10 comparison. I did iOS is the mobile operating system with many of updates. It's a grid of icons. It doesn't do much more than app polish, great social media apps, and just getting updated often in that ecosystem of Apple. Over here on the Samsung, it's a utility. It's a tool. This thing has so much you can do. You can even lower the DPI settings and it'll make it feel more like a tablet. So I'm in developer options and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So here I am with the Note 9. I'm gonna go ahead and put this into, let's put 700 for the minimum width. Now take a look at what happens to the Note 9. Yes, it's very tiny, don't get me wrong. That's not very functional for most of the day, but it turns it into like a little Samsung tablet. You know how tablets got this notification tray right here? Now if you go into the internet, now look at this. You have tabs, like full-blown tabs here, like a actual tablet would have. So we can hit different tabs right here. And yes, you could do that in Safari, but what I'm saying is these are like full-blown websites now here with this DPI setting. Now that's not gonna be functional all the time. I get this, this is this is very you know rare you're gonna need this, but when you do need it, the fact is you can turn this thing into a little tablet. And then you also got decks that can put it on a screen and make it more of a computer. 
So it's easy to criticize the iPhone XS Max for what it doesn't do right in having a big screen, but what it does do right, it does it very well, and that's being a super smooth, super large, beautiful, and just fast phone. It's a beast in performance. So in conclusion, for software, get the XS Max if you can deal with one app at a time, you like iOS updates, you love iOMessage, you love the social media apps, you just love the Apple ecosystem. Get the Note 9 if you want a utility. You're done with Apple with this no multitasking on large phones. You want to try out something that gives you more of a productivity enhancement kind of feel. You want the S Pen to click links in browsers that's like too small for your fingers. You don't got to zoom and click these little tiny things. You're going to love the Galaxy Note 9 in this regard. Okay, so I'm not going to do a performance test here because I've already done a performance test on both of these phones. Speed test, link up above, down below. These devices are both beasts, and in the real world, you're not really going to notice too much of a difference on your day-to-day -day uses. Now, I think that the performance on the XS Max feels more smooth and consistent than the Note 9 in that, you know, sometimes some apps will do a little twitch. Specifically games, they fly the animations look a little bit weird on the Note 9 sometimes, and that comes down to the optimization. This phone is just better optimized than the Note 9, so in terms of that smooth feel that just it just looks really slick. I think you'll like the XS Max more, but I think the way that Note 9 uses its power is much more practical. So you get a lot more practical use out of the power that is provided with the Note 9, like all that splitting of apps, you know, the ton of multitasking you could do with this phone. It really kind of seems to take advantage of its power. Whereas the iPhone XS Max is the clear powerhouse winner you have to be doing some hardcore gaming, some all day video editing, some, you know, AI apps all day. And I don't think a lot of people are doing that just yet to really get the most out of this. This phone feels like it's got the power for the future. It's just not taking advantage of it just yet. The Galaxy Note 9 feels like it's taking advantage of its power right now. In the real world, either one you go with, you're not going to be disappointed in performance. They're both fast. That 120 hertz sample rate on here, that touch rate, you can definitely feel that smoother feel on this over this guy, though. So keep that in mind. Overall conclusion, you're going to be happy with either, but I think overall raw power top dog performance is the 10s Max. Okay, guys, so I want to talk about this whole internet performance, this LTE, this Intel modems now. I understand that, you know, Apple and Qualcomm are going through some stuff right now, some legal battles. Apple went with Intel modems for this guy, but at the same time, I've actually seen faster LTE speeds than I've seen before on my previous iPhones and faster internet speeds altogether on the XS Max. So I know this is uh, affecting people in areas that aren't in major metropolitan areas and stuff like that. But I have seen great performance in LTE and Wi-Fi, so I can't really say it's bad for me, but I can understand if some people aren't having great performance. And I want you guys to leave your experiences down below to help people out or at least let people know what's going on with your device. But mine has been great here. But the Galaxy Note 9 is even faster on LTE than the iPhone XS Max in my experience. This thing is like a rocket. Every time Every time you load something, it's just boom, really fast. And you got to have a good network to get that great speed. I got T-Mobile, so very fast internet here for the Note 9. Okay, so let's talk about audio. First of all, headphone jack on the Note 9. If you get the Note 9, that's an automatic win. You have multiple ways to use your audio, whereas you don't even get a dongle in the box with the XS Max. So you're going to be buying your own dongle separately from Apple with your $1,100 phone here. So keep that in mind, no dongle, no headphone jack, but the iPhone XS Max speakers are so full and crisp, they sound even better than a Note 9's stereo speakers for the first time on a Note. Wow. If you cover this, it's still loud. So the sound is just so full and clear, even at the highest volume on the XS Max. Now, the Note 9 also sounds great as well with the Dolby Atmos ticked on. It's a very loud speaker as well. Let me cover this up. This speaker down here at the bottom is definitely better, though. It's pretty close. I think that you would actually have to test the decibels and stuff like that, but I think it's going to come down to subjective preference. I think the XS Max sounds better than the Note 9, but the Note 9 is really close, so I still would not pick either one of these just based on audio 
alone, but I like having a headphone jack. So for me, the Note 9 is the overall winner just because it has a headphone jack and darn near the same quality of stereo speakers. Just a little bit better on the XS Max though for the stereo speaker portion. Okay guys, so let's talk about their batteries because this one right here is a pretty important factor about buying both these phones. Samsung is really pushing how all day battery life in their marketing. That's the big thing about the Note 9. But funny enough, Apple's got a smaller battery in the iPhone XS Max. They're not really even talking that much about the battery. They're just talking about the bigger screen and it gets better battery life than the Note 9, even though the Note 9 is supposed to have the best battery life. The bad thing about the iPhone XS Max is that it gives you this puny charger in the box. Everybody knows about this $5 charger right here. You can get pretty much anywhere. I've seen these at Walmart for like nine bucks. So these things are cheap. It just has an Apple brand. It charges, takes forever, three hours to charge this thing right here. Samsung includes an adaptive fast charger right in the box. So that's a benefit to buying a Samsung device. Now, in terms of my use, I get about seven to eight hours, sometimes over eight hours of screen on time for the iPhone XS Max. So even though it's gonna take you a long time to charge this thing, it will last you one to one and a half days really easily. And if you're a light user, two days on the XS Max. So it's got marathon battery life. I still think my iPhone 8 Plus was a little bit better, but it still lasts a very long time for having a smaller battery than a Note 9. So I think if you want the longest lasting battery and better standby time by a mile, the iPhone XS Max is the better way to go. One thing I don't like is you can't see the battery percentage up there. You gotta keep swiping down every time to get to see your battery life. So that's one annoyance, but still, like I say, if you want the longer lasting battery, the XS Max is the way to go. Now, that doesn't mean that the Galaxy Note 9 can't last the whole day. It easily always lasts me a whole day. What I'm saying is that when I get home at the end of the day, I have less percentage on the Note 9. So I'll come home on a full day of use around 36%, you know, 35% around there. The XS Max, I got 49.50 at the end of the day. So it just lasts longer than the Note 9. And why does it last longer? Because the Note 9, I wanna put it in WQHD. I don't wanna run it in 1080, that, that resolution. That, that resolution's weak for the price I paid for this phone. But in 1080, I get even better battery life on the Note 9. What I'm trying to say here is the Note 9 can get you through the day, but you're coming home with less battery. Your battery's gonna die first on this phone. That's just what I've experienced. But if you don't care about that, if those like one or two hours more you can squeeze out of the XS Max, doesn't matter, you'd rather have fast charging, this comes super in handy because by the time you you have like, you know, maybe an hour or two more on the XS Max, you could charge and top this thing up in the same amount of time. So, you know, with most people having battery packs and stuff like that, I don't think this is again, I don't really think this is a deciding factor, but if I had to pick one to get me through a day, I'm picking the XS Max. It's got me better battery life. All right, so biometric security, you got Face ID here. For the XS Max, it works great. It's actually much more reliable, I found, than the iPhone 10. It's just not that much faster. It just, it just works better, though. So what I mean by that is it, does, it recognizes me more often than the iPhone 10 did. So in terms of the XS Max, there's no fingerprint, though. It's a two-swipe process. I know a lot of people say, just start swiping before you hit the screen, and it opens faster. Yeah, that's a little faster, but I don't want to do that. I just want to look at it and it opens. So, you know, the iPhone XS Max, you got to decide if you're cool with the Face ID, but it's very fast and efficient. Now, Samsung has a fingerprint scanner, iris scanner, face unlock. It's got all this stuff. Yes, you can't authenticate apps with the face like you can on the iPhone XS Max, which feels super cool when you're in your bank and you just look at it with your face and you open up your bank. That's awesome. You could still do that, though, with the fingerprint. So for the higher security, go with the fingerprint on the Note 9 or the iris scanner. But you have multiple ways to unlock it. You still have the old Android patterns and you also have full passwords you can write or you can write, you know, a pin code. So the Note 9 is loaded with security. It's got Knox on, on board. So this thing is a enterprise grade security phone. It's one of the most secure Android phones, if not the most secure Android phone you can buy. And we all know Apple kills it in the security game. So they're both very secure. I think the Note 9 is just a little bit more enjoyable to open, but I can't deny how cool it is to use Face ID to open up some of those apps that are really important, like your banking apps, for example. Pick between these two when it comes to biometrics for more simplicity, I would say Face ID is more simplistic. If you want more options and ways to lock up your phone, get the Note 9. You'll like the fact that you have five different ways to unlock this device. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the cameras. They both have basically the same uh, cameras on the rear when it comes to the sensor sizes, the megapixel size. 
They're both 12 megapixels, one over 2.55 inch sensors. The second lens is telephoto on both. They're a very similar setup. They're both optically stabilized. I think the iPhone does better video. It has a longer recording limit at 4K 60. So instead of talking about the cameras more, let's just show some photo examples. So you can see the quality of the photos you're gonna get on both is rather similar, but just like the displays, with the Note 9, you're getting a more vibrant photo, more exaggerated color. It just stands out more off that display. It almost looks like a sticker. Whereas you get a more accurate, more, I would say a more ph photographer's type of photo. So somebody who likes to shoot photography and edit their photos, you're really gonna like the 10s Max a little more than the Note 9. Now looking at this witch, you can see kind of how the 10s Max pulled the detail on that door a little bit more. Look at this right here. Just a little bit more detail there. So sometimes the 10s Max is gonna get more detail. Sometimes it's gonna be the Galaxy Note 9. So you can see right here, the Note 9, when I shot this photo, it looks a little darker for Note 9, a little brighter on the iPhone 10s Max. Now this comes down to their smart HDR. So in this camera now, it takes, it kind of takes four photos, like basically before you even shoot the photo and it does all this, you know, AI stuff and his neural engine stuff to make sure you get the best photo possible. So point and shoot photographers, people who don't want to tweak and know how to use exposure, raise the slider. This guy right here is still the better point and shoot camera, the 10s Max. Coming over here, let's go into this tree. You can see that, again, this is a really good example of the colors I'm talking about. You can see the tree on the Note 9 it's just more vibrant, it's more green looking. Whereas the tree over here for the 10s Max, a little bit more natural, a little bit closer to reality. So you gotta decide, do you like a more natural photo or a more vibrant photo? Okay, so here we are in a selfie photo. I can confirm that the iPhone 10s Max is definitely a softer image on the front than it was before, but Samsung's already had soft images on the selfie. So overall, I think people are actually gonna like that it doesn't show every little pimple and every little crease in their face on the front camera. So I don't know what this beauty gate issue is all about. It really doesn't bug me too much at all. You can see over here, the iPhone XS Max did a better job with the clouds in the background. So with these two cameras, you really gotta look for the details to see the, the differences. Okay, so here is a picture of the park. In this round, it looks like it's a little more orange for the XS Max. And you can see over here on the Galaxy Note 9, a little bit more muted, a little bit muted on the colors, but look at the sky in the background. It's a little bit more in detail there. So I think the iPhone XS Max is a little smarter of a camera than the Galaxy Note 9 without doing anything. You could put on the scene optimizer, but the iPhone XS Max just seems to do a little bit better with those kind of things. So here I took a picture of just a fire hydrant so you could see some color, and you could see that the XS Max and the Note 9, they're pretty close, a little bit more vibrant here for the Note 9. I, I really just think this is a pretty close wash. Like any phone you go with here, you're gonna be happy. And I mean, you really gotta look to see the details on the differences. I mean, look at the green in the background. It looks a little better here on XS Max. Either phone is gonna impress. I think that somebody who wants to tweak the photos a little bit more to their own liking will like the Note 9 more with its pro modes. But I think if you want a better point and shoot camera, the iPhone XS Max to me is the better point and shoot. Look how dark this one was over this one. And that's because of that smart HDR. It just knows what to do here on the 10s Max. So to me, the better camera for point and shoot, just point and shoot is the 10s Max. The better camera for pro mode tweaking and stuff like that is the Note 9. Okay guys, so in terms of the video, I don't have the same exact video, but I'm gonna show you guys a video sample on both. They both shoot outstanding video. You're gonna be happy with either. Let's begin 10s Max. You can see the Note 9 playing as well. Look at the detail on both of those. They're incredible. They look like little movies in your pocket. So either one you go with in terms of the video, you're gonna be extraordinarily happy. I just think the 10s Max has a little bit more smooth. It holds the focus a little bit better than a Note 9, but we're gonna compare them in a full camera comparison where we show some more video. So in conclusion, who should choose the 10s Max? People photographers. You like to take photos of people? The iPhone 10s Max does a better job with this. Skin tone, stuff like that. Looks better for the 10s Max. People who like point and shoot, they don't wanna do any settings, just wanna pull it out, shoot their photo, and get on with their day. 10s Max, I think, is smarter than the Note 9 with its neural engine and all that stuff. So the Note 9, who's this for? People who want vibrant flower photos. You want beautiful, vibrant nature photos. Do you really love, you know, colorful, you know, photos? You're gonna love this guy right here in the Note 9. Do you like to tweak your photos a lot? You like to use promos? Do you like to do filters? Do you like a lot of features? 
this this camera's got so much features you're going to be finding them later do you like to change your aspect ratios do you like to add sd card storage move that sd card it's a more complex camera it's more in depth if you're that person you'll love the note 9's camera pick the note 9 then and one last thing about the cameras this one does have that new depth effect thing i'll show it in the camera comparison it blurs the background the Note 9 already had this camera feature with live focus, so you could already do this before with the Note 9. So don't think that you don't get that depth effect where you can blur your background on your portrait modes. You could do that with the Note 9 as well. Now for the S Pen, I'm not gonna discuss the full range of features. You know what it is. It's got a bunch of software to go ahead and take advantage of this pen tool, drawing and things like that, writing down, jotting down notes. The iPhone XS Max has no Apple Pencil support and no type of stylus at all. So this is an automatic win for the Note 9. That's all I got to say about that. So in terms of call quality, I can't really say much bad about the Tennis Max. A lot of people are saying they're having reception issues. That's not my experience. I am fortunate to live in a major metropolitan area. I have T-Mobile. T-Mobile is basically like the one of the best in Chicago for service. So, you know, basically, I don't have any issue with this guy. Now, the Galaxy Note 9, I found a cause to just sound better. They just sound better in the earpiece to me. Um, the speakerphone's loud on both but I find the calls just to sound better, period, on the Note 9. So I think the Note 9 wins in the phone call quality. So at the end of the day, if you were to ask me which one should I pick for this kind of money, I would say the Note 9 is the better value here because you can already find it for under $1,000. It's going to keep coming down and you're getting everything this iPhone XS Max offers besides iOS. If iOS is what you want, you don't even need my advice. You already know what you're getting. For this kind of money, this feels more like a laptop in your pocket. This feels more like a big smartphone. So the Note 9 wins for me in terms of overall value for money. So that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Which one will you pick? Comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Did you find this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoying? Click the like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Took a lot of effort to create this video. I will catch you all in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and peace.